have and then because it gives me a delay so i don't know oh it says oh there we are sharing live oh, yay, we're live hi everybody Hello, facebook <laughs> That was quicker this time. I'm getting better at it. Hey, you know what? Practice makes perfect. Exactly, exactly. That's awesome. <laughs> so right now I'm sitting here with Shelly Pitomaki in, of Seeking Hope. And Shelly joined me just a few months ago, a couple weeks ago on the podcast. But I've invited her back to talk about this was prior to this pandemic and all the time. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah. So welcome. Thank you for having me back. And it's good seeing you again. You too. Yeah. And I'm, <laughs> I'm excited for you to, to share some um, jewels with people on how to how to navigate their way through all of this that's happening. Yeah. You know, as a crisis interventionist, I, I come into, you know, the individual crisis. And, and this is a unique opportunity. We've done natural disasters. And I've done natural disasters before or major um major incidences so like a shooting at the theater you know or i was the person on call in the poway um shooting at the habat of poway the jewish synagogue and so those are major crises and i've done you know individuals where i've walked alongside someone in um who's just experienced the death of their husband but this is a global thing this is yeah. this is brand new and how we approach some of this is a little bit different, but it's still the same basic principles apply. And that's the most amazing thing about emotional first aid is that it's the same basic principles. And it's really starting off with just acknowledging we're in this crisis. Yes, it's, it's a fact. It's truth. Accept it. Instead of trying to go, well, if we had done this differently, or if we'd done that, stop you know, Monday morning quarterbacking the whole thing, because it's, it's not going to help you. All you do is continue to get on the, that hamster wheel and you're not going anywhere, but you're spinning like crazy and you're getting stressed out. The people around you are watching getting stressed out and there's nothing that can change about it. So we acknowledge where we're at and we accept where we're at and then invite in going, wow, well, how do you feel about that? And letting us talk to each other going, well, this really is miserable. So I've got a couple ladies in my group, um, my, my Bible study group, and we were talking and we have three seniors that are supposed to graduate and do their last oh. semesters of senior year at high school. And they're devastated. Yeah. And I said, yeah. And she's like going, well, you know, I mean, and I'm talking with the parents, so I'm not talking with the kids and they're saying, well, you know, it, yeah, this is bad and everything else, but you know, life gets so much harder and it's so much worse. And, and we had a third grader, you know, his mom's now all of a sudden a, you know, elementary school teacher, right. For third grade and going, he says, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to him. And I just, you know, it's like, really? And I'm looking at these ladies and going, <clears throat> ladies, it is the worst thing that's ever happened to them. He's nine. Yeah. It is the worst thing that's ever happened to him. And it's kind of like, yeah, but life gets, but he hasn't had but life yet. This is his worst moment. So go, you know what? It is. You're right. And I said, and you will automatically see this release of the shoulders. They go, okay. Because right now he's trying to prove, he knows that you've got your stuff going on and everything else, but he's trying to prove the fact that, well, he's not doing good either. And when we discount that, when we discount the seniors getting go to prom, getting to play their spring sports. And for some of them, their spring sports is what they're working on getting their scholarships to college on. Right. I mean, this is an impact that we don't even realize. And, and I was talking about this and then, you know, somebody else pops up and goes, well, you know, but it's the economic thing. What about everybody that's out of work? And I said, listen to everybody here, guys. We all have a unique perspective and it affects us different from everybody else. Yeah, this I, isn't, it's not a competition of who's hello. got it worse. Right. Right. But right. that's that normal thing that, that we do in, in, in good times or in, in average times, the, the norm, right? Right. Is that, well, I have this. And it's like, well, I have that. Or we're not giving the fact that, you know, this is their worst. Yeah. Just because it may not be yours doesn't mean it's not theirs. And to discount that means to not value them to not give them the, what they need to cope. And that's not fair. It's not right. 
And all it does is it drives people crazy. You lose friendships, you stop communicating, which is the last thing we need to be going on right now is to stop <laughs> communicating. So it was a very interesting dialogue. I'm sitting back watching this going, hmm, well, I think I have my next podcast. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, it was really when we talked about it, and I kind of talked him through that, going, that is this is your nine-year-old's very worst. This is your daughter not getting to go to prom because yeah, the prom dress got delivered in from Amazon and she's never gonna wear it again. It's like, well, why not? Right. Have a spontaneity little prom in your own house. You know what? Have dad get dressed up or brother or whoever get dressed up, put it on and go, you know, she's going to have the most remarkable story when she's sitting down talking to her grandkids going, I had a prom. It was in quarantine. And you know what? I still have the pictures of me in that dress being in quarantine. You know, have fun with it. Have a roll of toilet paper in each hand, and, <laughs> right. and, you know, yeah. make a crown out of those and put a mask over, your, you know, you can either sit there and dwell in the hard shape of this, right. or we can search for the gold and silver moments in it. And we're already in the hardship. So you can either sit in the muck or you can rise above it and go, you know what? We got to do something else about this and yes. let's do something else. Yes. So, I mean, that's just one, you know, unique perspective that, um, you know, college are also going, well, wait a minute. We are not going to have now a whole new spring field. How are we going to do that? It's like yeah. the Olympics being canceled. Well, that's, Everybody is going to adjust. You're not the only one that is in that situation. So take a deep breath, go, you know what? I'm not alone. This is going on and it's going to roll out. However, it's going to roll out. I have my faith to go, you know what, God, you got this. I don't have an idea and it's not a clue and that's okay. I said that earlier. I was like, and there you go. <laughs> and there you go. Uh, it's like, uh, this is as good as it gets, you know, right. and you let it go from that point of perspective. Right. Yeah. No, I, and I love what you're saying. And I said that earlier with another conversation of finding the gifts within the chaos, because yes. it's chaos for every single person right now. There is there, all of our lives are being affected globally. That's globally. millions of people. Yeah. This is, this is, this is not just our little square here. It's, it's, it's beyond, you know, and then I think globally and I get the picture of the globe in my mind, you know, cause you know, I'm one of those that didn't have all this computer stuff. We had the actual globe in our house right. and I just go, wow. You know, and think about that. And, and it is remarkable, you know, thinking about back when we were younger, you know, in the early seventies, when I was a kid running around the street and all the kids were running around, you saw parents come out and they chit chat with the neighbor and this and that. And you know what? I'm seeing that. I didn't realize I had as many kids in my neighborhood as I do. It's like, wow, where did they all come from? This is <laughs> awesome. You know, you're seeing kids playing outside and you're seeing you know, families walking together. Yes. How much time have we ever really spent? You know, and, and for me, it's kind of like, the Lord just reached down and is doing a little reset button here that says, you know what? It's we're not to stop praising or putting on idols our, you know, our athletes, our movie stars, our job, the size of our house, all those things. No, what's really important? It's the love, it's the connection, it's our families. And and whether that's a chosen family or that's a by birth family, it doesn't matter. But it's the people in our lives that really make the difference. And this has given us an opportunity to connect with yeah. people again, right. even if it's electronic. You just said the word connect and that another, I was just going to say that word that another, <laughs> another guest had said, connect, connect, connect. And that's, that's it. I mean, truly. Well, we were made for connection yeah. when, you know, the world was and all of that and 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 because i'm a chaplain and and i and i and i'm on that side of, of this little wedge but you know we were made it made made man and then he's like well needs a partner needs a you know you have to do life together when we care for one another you are more you are it's more blessed to give than it is to receive well if you have somebody to give to then how can you get it it's a cycle we need people we need a connection you yes. know, scientists and, and psychologists and psychotherapists will tell you over and over and over again, it's the connection that people that are isolated become more withdrawn, start, that's when you start seeing a lot of mental health problems is that they're drawn. One of the first symptoms of major depression is 
withdrawing. And it's because we don't have that connection and we need that desperately. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So what strategies, do you have any suggestions for people to utilize during this time? To well, one of the things I was talking about this morning, actually, I was, was on, um, on TV earlier this morning and it's about resiliency. What is it? We are we actually are born with some resiliency. It's just, we, we do. It's why there's that thrive to live. When you see an infants that are pre, you know, premature and things, they're just, it's like they're fighting to live. Well, they are, it's inbred in us. We are born with some of that. The great thing is, is that we can actually nurture resiliency. And how do we do that? And what are the things that we can do to build that resiliency, whether you're 60 years old or whether you're, you know, 10 years old, there's methods and things that you can do. And one of the things that I was offering actually on my seekinghope.com website is a resiliency quiz that you can take for yourself, figure out kind of where is your resiliency? You probably have more resiliency than you even are aware right. of. And then how do we build on top of that? What do we do? Um, I just did a live um, webinar last night and it's being recorded and I'm just going to put it up there free again on my website to download. And it talks about resiliency and some of the key factors that you can go through. But, you know, those are staying connected, you know, right there, having a spiritual foundation of whatever that means for you, whether that's meditation, whether that's um, faith-based, um, Christ-based, whether you're Buddhist or Islamic, whatever it happens to be, it doesn't matter. That you need to have a spiritual core to yourself. We're a body that's made up of body, mind, and spirit. And it's a three-legged stool. And anytime one of those legs falls apart, the stool falls over. Right. So let's, you know, right now the, the legs might be a little bit loose, but we can tighten them up and make it so it's a strong platform for us to stand on. And so resiliency is the biggest thing. And we don't actually practice that in nurture. We talk about reducing stress, but to reduce stress, we also have to replace it with something. We want to build resiliency into that. And part of that is exercise and good nutrition and things like that. But it's connecting. It's having a foundation, um, assessing your surroundings. You know, right now, more people, and me included, home improvement projects, that closet <laughs> that never gets cleaned out. You'd be amazed at the baggage you can get rid of, not only physically, yes. right, but emotionally and spiritually yeah. by cleaning out those closets. Yes. I have this giant banker's box full of all the photos because we don't do photos that have the photo mat anymore, right? right. Where you get doubles. Um, but I have a box that's full of photographs when my kids were young because my kids are all grown. I'm an empty nester. And I'm like going, what am I going to do with that? I, I actually can sit down and go through these banker boxes and it's their whole life. I mean, I'm a little organized freak. So they've got like dates on them all. So they're all kind of chronological. <laughs> I'm there with um, you. Yeah. I, but you know what? I finally get to go through that and make up and actually albums because now I'm having grandchildren that I can actually put their lives together and send it off to them. You know, I mean, it's like these things. And so I'm revisiting my kids' childhood and their births and their second birthdays and the time that they learned to ride a bike. And we can do this. Yeah. But we that's just beautiful. have to make a priority. Yeah, for sure. We just finished our, so our whole bathroom. The, the resilience is realized where some of that comes from. Yeah. And resilience see, is such there a, you go. Yeah. I mean, resilience is such a big, important factor for, I know when I took my, my ACEs score, Yes. And scored super high. Well, then I took my resilience score and I scored super high because I'm in the exact same boat. Yeah. yeah. You know, before I knew about resilience and ACEs and all that, someone had asked, Terry, how did you ever survive all that you went through? And I used to think, I don't, I don't know. I, I have a clue. Yeah. <laughs> and now that I understand resilience, I was like, oh, now I understand. Oh, once, you, once you connect that word with what it is in your life and you look at that, because I have an extremely high ACEs score and um, we've talked about that before, Yeah. but right, my resilience score was off the chart as well going, okay, well, no wonder I'm still here and, you know, I'm still doing okay, you know, yeah, right. okay. <laughs> and I think sometimes the more adversity you go through, you find a way because inbred in us when we're born, this fight flight, you know, freeze type of thing, but we have a, an ability to want to, it's a thrive. You want to you yes. know, thrive for life. And we just automatically figure out a way. It's the most amazing thing about human beings. 
we are, you know, at the top of the food chain because we want, we just innately want to do better. And when you're not in that mode, you go, ooh, that ought to be your ticket that says, oh, something's not right. right. What do I need to do? I need to go back and look at a few things and take a step back. Yeah. And, and that would be my, you know, you want to go forward. You want to do it. Yes, it's difficult, but look for the silver lining in all of this. You are more resilient than you think you are. You can do things. You really don't have a choice. So you might as well accept it and laugh and love and enjoy along this path. Yes. Absolutely. And for those who feel isolated as if they can't connect with others, there's phone calls. Someone suggested writing letters, um, you know, the old fashioned way of communicating. <laughs> and yeah. You know, the, it's so funny. We talk about the old fashioned way of communicating, right? But even to this day, when I um, interview with someone or do something and I send a letter, a little note, um, I get more text and response backs on my phone that go, oh my gosh, your note came today. It was just so cute. It's like going, what is, you know, it's like, yeah, but it's from a generation that doesn't do that. Right. And I was telling my son one time, they going, send him a thank you note. He goes, well, I'm gonna write my email. I said, no, 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 no. I want you to send him a thank you note. Here's thank you notes. Here's the things, write a thank you note and send it. And I'll be, if he didn't, of course, get back, in that company ended up getting a job and he, he goes wow what made the difference between the other you know 500 applicants and his boss told me, he goes i got a note from you yeah he came home and told me he goes mom i know you know what you're gonna say you know so <laughs> kind of thing. and i'm like oh, yes that's me I told him. um in my kids i have to actually remind them to send them a text that says go to your mailbox go right 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 <laughs> you know um and I'm trying to do a little bit that with, with my sons. I said I was an empty nester. So I all three of my sons now are in the hotbeds of the United States. Um, I have one that lives in Seattle. Oh my God. I have one that lives in Manhattan, New York. And I have one that lives in LA. So wow. it's, it's scary, but it's also really great um, to have some of those conversations with, with them and, and being able to touch base and, you know, having a grand baby who's only four months old that I don't get to see and, and look at and talk to. But, you know, thank goodness for this technology, which never existed before, but it's still really great to send those little thank you notes. I've been, I have been crocheting and knitting like crazy because I have nothing else to do. And I'm kind of one of those person that has to do something. And um, so I've made like three dresses and I've made a doll and all this stuff. And I just, my husband goes, is that another box that's got to go to the post stops? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, right. <laughs> Send little silly dumb things to each other, you know? Yeah. It's fun. People, who does not like to get a gift? A surprise yeah. thing that just shows up in the mail. Well, you know? I'll tell you, one of my favorite humans in the world who I just adore, and, and my my dear friend Chris, and we, we'll take walks at the nature center together, but we've even walked at the mall. Like, I'm like, okay, let's do my little old lady walk at the mall. But she <laughs> randomly it went just randomly as we're leaving the our mall walk she'll say oh I got you a little something and she'll hand me a handwritten note and the last time she handed me this was before the pandemic a little tiny cute happy birthday hand sanitizer <laughs> I was like well that was perfectly timed because you know no kidding. two weeks later but so now I carry that with me and every time I open it I'm just like oh Chris oh. Send the little it's, prayer off for her because I mean, but it's those little tiny things that really do make a huge impact in people in connecting. Well, it make it makes that connection, but think of the the long portion of that is you're making a little purchase, which is keeping some store going, which somebody had to have made that and manufactured that. I mean, there is we don't have to spend a lot of money because if we're very concerned about our finances right now and, and how much we're gonna have to carry on. Right. Or my girlfriend, I just find, I know something, I have something in my house that she loves. And I'm like going, do I really need this in my house? Maybe not. So I just pack it up, send it off, you know? And it's just like going, I've always liked that at your house. And you have to say, no, I don't know. Someday you'll send it back. And, you know, we used to have a, a t-shirt that traveled around probably for 15 <laughs> or 20 years that got mailed in at Christmas or birthdays, Father's Day. It was just the rattiest looking thing ever, but it was so much fun. And that's the whole point. It's like, well, take this object, 
take a picture of it, post it on Facebook, and it's the traveling gnome. You know, it's that. Right. Have some fun. Start some things. We're actually starting at Seeking Hope called the Hub of Hope. Um, and it's where you can go in and write on our social media or whatever, but we're collecting stories of hope to oh. give people inspiration and ideas of either a, what they can do, what they're, um, just to lift someone else's up or is that something I could do or maybe not, but that feels so good. And it's got that, you know, it's like watching the, you know, Johnson and Johnson, you know, baby commercials. It's just oh. that feel good feeling, right. You know, or the seniors having their their egg mcmuffin together at you know dated mcdonald's it's like it's just those things why not right so we're doing the hub of hope and um so look for that and i would love to have, see you post a little story of hope and or it's yours or friends or whatever you've experienced would be awesome yeah just to spread sure. the good stuff yeah and i'll send yeah. that link i'll i'll find it on your on your website and i'll put the link out on social media so yeah we're starting to put it together so it should be there within the week or so okay um, but i will definitely you and i keep, keep track of each other on, on social media yeah. anyway but we'll definitely i'll ping you um oh for just sure spread that on and, and it'll be a place where anybody can just come to read some good things add their own whatever it is just to help foster hope yeah. Because, you know, really hope is a belief that there is change, right? Hope is a belief that something better is going to happen. And that's what we have to count on. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Well, my, my newsletter is hope for healing because hope is a huge part of that whole journey, in my opinion. So yeah, absolutely. As long All as right. you have these slivers of hope, then you've, you've got yes. an ability. For sure. So anything else that you want to touch upon before we close out? Um, if you people, if you people, gee, many Christmas, that sounded <laughs> awfully strange. Um, hello, um, on my website, seekinghope.com, we have the resiliency quiz. I just uploaded some more. There's probably five or six brand new things on there that are all free to download and use for crisis. Um, what you can expect from children at the, all the different age groups of, if you see these happening in your kids, you can bet that they're feeling the effects of what's going on so that it helps you to monitor some of that stuff um, and also our cares uh, response card and my webinar is going to be up there probably in the next day or two that I did live um, last night um, free to just look at and enjoy please check back in and do that sign up for my web um, my email thing um, so that you can get new updates of when things are coming out and I'm just so excited. I've been helping the San Diego community. I've been on um, Fox 5 as their local crisis intervention expert. And so I'm helping out the whole San Diego community that way. And just trying to you know, give enough love and everything wherever I possibly can. So, well, I, I love the love you give out. I love the light you give out. Um, yeah, I just so appreciate, well, one, meeting you and knowing you, but um, connecting again like this and having you be able to shine more light of hope into the world. So thank you. It's been awesome. I, thank you for the pleasure and the privilege to be able to come alongside with you. Awesome. All right. Well, everyone, remember, as I say on the podcast, until next time, be gentle with yourself. Take care. Be blessed. Bye. Bye.